During the last dance, Dennis Rodman said that's one area that helps MJ in the GOAT debate. When comparing MJ and LeBron, Rodman said that LeBron, quote, doesn't have that desire to win at any cost that Jordan had. Shannon, is there any truth to this? No. And I want to know why Dennis Rodman feels he needs to keep LeBron's names in his dentures. It's not good enough. See, Dennis, Dennis Rodman was out of, out of sight, out of mind. And then all of a sudden, the last the, the documentary, of, I think two series ago, Skip, they're talking about him going to Vegas, and now all of a sudden he wants to be back in the national spotlight. See, it's not good enough. Skip, here's the thing. Dennis Rodman can say a thousand words, and nobody, will, no, no newspaper, nobody will pick it up. But he says 1,001 words. And that one word is LeBron, you already know what's going to happen. And that's where we are right now, Skip Bayless. Why is this man constantly in your mouth? Because, see, this is what happened, Skip. And we've talked about this before. Everybody feels their era is the best. We, we feel sacred. We hold that dearly. And if somebody says somebody from a different era is better than somebody in us, we feel that's a knock on all of us because we're supposed to have the best. So now it lessens, it cheapens all of us. No, you can stand alone. LeBron can be great on his own. Okay, we want to debate the GOAT talk. Okay, fine. You like Jordan? I'm not finna fight anybody because they're saying Jordan's better than LeBron. I like uh, LeBron. I'm not finna fight anybody on, on that stance, but that's just what I believe. But Dennis Rodman, for all of a sudden, every word that comes out of his mouth has something to do with LeBron. Skip, he can dress in a wedding dress. He can put on a wig. He can do all the stuff. And nobody would pay him any attention. But the moment he says something about LeBron, we already know it's going to be in a negative light and it's going to spread like wildfire in the California hills. And that's what he keeps doing. Keep that man. That man is in quarantine with his wife and kids. He's training. He's not thinking about Dennis Rodman. But for some reason, we keep flipping over rocks and this critter keeps crawling out from under with something negative to say. Bruh, why you got to keep that man's name in your mouth? Uh, Shannon, quick point of order. When Dennis Rodman dressed in a wedding dress, he was on the cover of every sports section in America. He was on magazine covers. He was hot, why was this, hot, why was it hot there? in those years. Skip, why, he, he dominated man. the conversation when he was dating Madonna and Carmen Electra. He dominated national barbershop conversation. So, Skip. The this, reason I love Dennis I Rodman, go ahead. My only point is, Skip, yes, but you have to realize what happens now if he dresses in a, a wedding dress, if he cross dresses. He's not in the NBA. He's not winning rebounding titles. He's not winning championships. He's not dating Madonna. He doesn't have that. So now what? The only way he can get his name in the headlines is by doing what? Trash and goat James. Come on, Skip, you know how this works. This is what I tell football players all the I time, guess. Skip. You might think, you might think you're different outside, but people want to talk to you and want to hear what you got to say because you're in the NFL. You'll find out once you're out of the NFL how many reality TV shows you get once you leave the NFL. Then come talk to your boy. What I love and have always loved about Dennis Rodman is that beneath the crazy, wacky, dysfunctional Dennis Rodman is this sort of ineloquent brilliance, basketball brilliance, this simple basketball genius that allowed him at six feet, eight inches tall to dominate the league as a below the rim rebounder. Year after year after year, he led the league in rebounding at six, eight because he was so instinctive he had the gift of, of seeing it before it happened. And he had the pleasure and the honor of getting to play with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. He knows this was a bullseye statement. Yes, he's being interviewed more because of the last dance. But if you ask him about LeBron, he's just going to tell you the point blank truth that you can't handle. It's, it's a bingo truth. It's, it's right on the button because it's exactly what I've been saying since 2006 on national television. 
Michael wanted to win. He had that raging desire to win at any cost that LeBron just isn't built to have. LeBron's more of a lover than a fighter. LeBron, I've always said, he's a really nice guy, truly a nice guy to a fault. He's too nice of a guy to lift a team and drive a team the way Jordan drove a team to six championships and six tries with six finals MVPs. In the end, Michael Jordan was about killer will and supreme mental clutch toughness and psycho drive that I don't see in LeBron. LeBron can degenerate under fire into this finger pointing blame deflector who will tend to throw his teammates under the public bus. Witness the quote during the 2016 Super Bowl that we attended in Houston, in which he, after a game in New Orleans, a loss in New Orleans for the Cleveland Cavaliers said, we're top heavy as, you know what, bleep. Right, and right. Jordan never would have said that. Criticized it. Jordan's not gonna dismiss his teammates. Jordan's going to do it behind closed doors that we're getting open now in the documentary. But, but he ridiculed and drove his teammates in practice, in the locker room, on the team plane. He did not do it through the media. There was no social media where LeBron takes these subtle, between the lines, passive aggressive shots at Kevin Love. You know, are you with us or not? Are you within or without? I, I couldn't even understand what he was talking about. And I don't think Kevin could either. LeBron doesn't love one-on-one, -on -one, face to face confrontation. He shies from that. He does it through social media. It's, it, he was born to be on social media. And his billions of blind witnesses love him and follow him like this, this modern day Pied Piper on social media, but they're blinded to what he really is until now. And I think billions of blind witnesses are getting their eyes open to, uh-oh, that guy, he was on another plane, another level from LeBron James. And that's all Dennis is saying, that, that rage to win, that drive, that thing that Jordan had this great quote last night, Shannon, that just just summed it up. And he got emotional when he was saying it. And he finally had to say break because he just couldn't talk anymore. But he said, my mentality was I'm going to win at any cost, at any cost. And, and if you don't want, want to go with me on this, if you don't want to live with my regimented mentality, then I don't want you alongside me. And if you're going to stay beside me until you reach my level, I'm going to ridicule you. And if you can't reach my level, it's going to be hell for you. That's it. That's the essence. That's not LeBron James we're talking about. That's Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the GOAT. That's what made him the GOAT. It wasn't pretty. It was often ugly. Will Purdue said in the documentary, he often crossed the line, and he did. You call it bullying, but you, but I you call were, it but, genius but skill, leadership. But you, but, it's the way- No, it's not genius skill. He crossed the mm -hmm. line. The man is yep. telling you he crossed the line, but you're saying it's okay because he won six championships? It worked. It worked well. It, it worked. worked. He, he said, I'm gonna pull people along who don't wanna be pulled along. That was Michael's quote last night. He took, he, he zeroed in on the weakness in every one of his teammates and he attacked their weakness in practice and in the locker room and tried to make it a strength that he could lean on and trust in big playoff games. And it worked because he did toughen up yeah. Horace Grant and Scott Burrell and Steve Kerr and Will Perdue. He toughened them all up and brought them up to his level come playoff time. Result, six for six in championships. And see, and they're, in, and they're the problem that I have, Skip, is that because, the, because he's six for six, everything he did to get that, we overlook. No, Skip, no way, no how. We can't do that, Skip. I get it. Michael Jordan is supremely talented. But you can't say bullying is okay. LeBron James says we're top heavy. You and others excoriated him. 
where he's taking shots. You can't do that. Michael Jordan took literal shots. Not figuratively, literal no, shots. No, and no, 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 like, no, 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 no. He never took any yeah. shots publicly. Nothing through the media ever. Yeah. He no, didn't take yeah, shots yeah. at Scott Burrell or Horace Grant in the media. No. Skip, Skip, I said he took a literal shot. He punched the man in the face. That's not figuratively, that's literal. That's what the term figuratively and literally means. He literally did take a shot. What am okay. I missing? And did it work? What did Steve Kerr say? <laughs> In a weird way, it was the greatest thing that could have happened. Oh I stood up to him and I won his respect. And Michael was quoted last night as saying, I gained respect for him. All of a sudden, they're on Skip. equal footing. I can trust him to take a big shot and make a big shot in a big and finals game. Bingo. Way to go, Michael. And then, we're, Skip, we're looking at the documentary. He's calling Scotty Burrell a garden utensil, a garden instrument. How many times? What, what is that motivating? Now I got to step you. I got to check you, bro. I'm not going to continue to let you call me out my name. Skip, this is unacceptable. Skip, we got to stop this. This is not okay. When it, Skip, you can't say because he was six for six. Everything that he did to get there is okay. That's what you're doing. You can't do that. It's okay to say Joel Shannon. was unbelievable, but some of the things he did was wrong. It's okay to say some of the things that he did was wrong. You're 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 window dressing, you you uh green lighting. Everything he did to get to six and six, and that for me will not fly. I'm getting goosebumps talking about this because I was there, I saw it from the inside out. He was relentlessly all over ridiculing Scott Burrell. And he, he pushed him, he even said last night, I tried to get him to fight me in a good way. Well, to your point, as you said earlier in the show, way. is there a good way to fight? He just won, he, <laughs> he thought Scott Burrell, who once upon a time was the 20th overall pick in the draft, who was drafted twice yeah. by Major League Baseball, who, who could have had a future in baseball as well as basketball. He saw him as soft from the start, and Scotty Burrell was soft. He had all kinds of nice shooting talent, but he was not mentally tough enough. Jordan toughened him up, and I told you on that run to the final last dance championship at Utah was mm -hmm. a crucial game in a first round matchup, a five game matchup, five game series at New Jersey. New Jersey played them close twice at the United Center, and game three was sold out, blow the roof off in New Jersey. And I thought they were in danger of losing that game. And guess who came up big? Well, Jordan came up huge because he had 38. But Scotty Burrell came off the bench in that game and scored 23 in 24 minutes. He lived up. And I think Michael was like a proud papa or a proud big brother after that game because he singled out Scotty Burrell and complimented him in the post-game session that I attended because he knew he had toughened him up enough that he could make big shots in a crucial game that could have gotten them in trouble if they had lost it. They won it and ended that series thanks to Scott Burrell. So he contributed in ways he was probably not capable of contributing until Michael made him a pet project. You can call it bullying, but bullying is when it's a bad guy with a black heart who wants to just bully somebody for bullying's sake because he's insecure about his own manhood. Jordan was as yeah. secure about his manhood as any player I was ever around. This was coaching. He was doing Phil Jackson's job of motivating. And he did it beautifully with Scott Burrell, and it worked. Yeah, Skip, we got to be careful of this because what you're doing is that you're taking Michael Jordan and you're looking at the great ball player and you say because there's no malintent, there's no, no hatred in his heart, it's not bullying. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is, Skip. You do not have to have, you do not have to have ill intentions. If you use your position, if you use your place of authority in a situation to suppress, because that's what he was doing, calling that man out of his name, saying I, I wanted him to fight 
uh, in a good way. What good way is that a fight? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this, maybe that's how they do it up there in Wilmington, North Carolina. But from where I'm from, there is no good way to fight except square up and bump. That's the only way I know. So if that's what you're trying to get at, Skip, but you can't do that. You say because he had a good heart. I mean, hold on. That's what you say. I'm sure there are other people that came in contact with Michael Jordan that would say his heart isn't good. So why does why does when this is his documentary? I get it. But nah, you got to miss me with this one. I don't agree with everything Michael did. Six for six is what it is. Him being all time great is what it is. But some of this, what he did, nah, you're going to have to miss me with that one, Skip. Shannon, Shannon, I believe I was around Michael enough to know he actually had a really nice guy side to him. He could be a nice guy. And it was real, authentic, genuine. But yeah. in the end, when it was time to win a championship, there's no time for Mr. Nice Guy. This isn't church oh, league. It's not even AAU. It's not YMCA basketball. This is for legacy. This is for history. And he's going to <laughs> lift you with him. As Steve Kerr said last night, he's going to make you be him so that he can trust you in the postseason. And it, again, Bill Winnington said, hey, in the end, it worked. And I don't think any of them hate Michael now because he won them a whole lot of jewelry. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.